Welcome everyone. Today's topic is uh, maximize your profits with uh, the foreclosure process. So what we're, we're, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over the foreclosure process. We're gonna explain this in a very, very simple manner so that you fully understand what the foreclosure process is, is all about and how you can maximize your profits um, based on the different stages where we can intercept the property before it goes to the judicial auction. So I'm gonna to explain to you in a nutshell what the foreclosure process is and all its stages. And then I'm gonna show you um, a graphic of the different stages. Um, so what's foreclosure? Who enters foreclosure, okay? Uh, so the foreclosure process is when uh, somebody takes a loan from the bank and they make a promise to make a payment on a monthly basis, which is the mortgage. Uh, but guess what? For whatever reason, that owner um, defaults on the loan. So once it hits 30 days late, then 60 days, 90 days, guess what? The bank is going to start reaching out to the owner uh, very frequently. They're going to start with phone calls. They're going to start with letters. Uh, because the bank doesn't want to put the loan uh, in default, meaning enter the pre-foreclosure state. And the reason why is because the banks are in the lending process, okay? So they are not in the real estate business. They don't want to take over your property or the owner's property, okay? And not only that, but it is very costly for the banks to put owners in the foreclosure process. They can um just for filing fees and attorneys it could be 10 to 15000 just to put um the owner in the foreclosure process once the uh, loan is in default and not only that it gets worse for the banks the process can take up to 2 years you heard me right 2 years before the bank can take over the property okay so the bank is going to try to avoid uh putting the loan in default not only that but it looks the bank is gonna look bad when it has loans in default okay because usually many banks are gonna sell off their notes uh in the secondary market okay um so if they if they have a lot of default loans um, that's going to affect the rating of the bank. So they, they, they have to be very careful uh, when they underwrite the loans to make sure that people are going to fulfill their promise. However, there's no guarantee. And now with the coronavirus, guess what? There's going to be a huge wave of foreclosures coming into the market in the next um, three to nine months. So we're gonna to need to look out for that. That is why it's so critical for you to understand the process. So let's assume somebody goes into foreclosure process uh, because after 90 days, the bank will officially put the owner in the foreclosure process, okay? So guess what? That's when we start to take action. When the owners enter their foreclosure process, why is that? Because at that point, we're going to be targeting uh, two types of leads. One has to have a lot of motivation. And two, they have to have a lot of equity. Okay? That's how we're going to be able to maximize from the foreclosure process. Those two uh, features have to apply. Uh, so what does that mean? Let's say John Doe went into foreclosure process and his property is worth 200,000 after repair value, but he only owes, let's say 50,000 on the property, right? Um, so he's got a lot of equity, but guess what? He might not be extremely motivated to sell the property. So that's not gonna be a hot lead per se, okay? It's gonna be sort of like a warm or, or cold lead. Uh, so we need to have those two pieces in place for us to maximize from the foreclosure process. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, where we are in that stage uh, of the pre-foreclosure. So I'm going to show you these graphically so that you have a better understanding. Uh, so the, the first block is when the owner misses the payment, right? So then the next step is after, I would say 
60 to 90 days, the bank will officially put the owner in foreclosure. Okay, so at that point is when we are going to reach out to the owner and say, you know, um, by the way, you know, I'm a real estate investor buying properties in this plains, and I happen to realize that your property is in uh, the foreclosure process. Did you know about that? So you casually ask the question when you reach out to the owner, right? Why do you do that? Because you want to find out their motivation, right? Most people, when they enter the foreclosure process, guess what? They're going to be in denial. They think they're going to be able to um, catch up with the payments and get out of the foreclosure process. But over 90% will not be able to get out of the foreclosure process and they will eventually lose their home at the judicial auction. Okay, so uh, that is the first opportunity um, that we as investors have when they enter the foreclosure process. And guess what? In Chicago Deal Mode, we are going to show you when that happens, okay? So I'm going to log on to uh, Chicago Deal Mode right now, and I'm going to show you where that stage kicks in, okay? So these are all off-market properties. So in, in Deal Mode, we're going to go on their off-market properties pre-foreclosures. So what do we mean by off-market properties? That means that these properties are technically not for sale. That, those are the properties that are going to have the biggest profit spread, okay? Uh, so at this point, what we're going to do is we are going to go into pre-foreclosure. So I'm going to quickly show you um, these are the people who enter foreclosure early on. So I'm going to randomly pick one of them. So I'm going to pick the first one, okay? Just to quickly show you what it means, okay? I'm going to show you the data. So these individual, I'm going to give you their name, is Angela, right? Angela, uh, she is in Chicago. Now she owes 344000 okay? So I'm going to show you why she entered in foreclosure. Right here, the last payment amount was back in uh, August 2019, okay? And then guess what? The bank filed for pre-foreclosure or foreclosure in April, last month. So it took the bank, how many months? Uh, August, September, October, November, December, January, April, May, April, May. So about seven months before the bank put the owner in the foreclosure process. Okay, so we get notified when that happens. So Angela is officially in pre-foreclosure, okay? So at this point, uh, remember what I told you, we need two conditions for us to be able to help the owner and, and obviously benefit in the process. Uh, because we are in the people's business, so we are going to provide a solution for the owner because they're gonna eventually lose the property, right? So we're gonna be looking for two things, motivation and equity. So in this case, how do we know if we have a lot of equity on the property? So they owe 344, but the property is worth 400,000 to 440. So there is not enough meeting the bone. So this is not a lead that we would pursue because there is not enough equity. We want to have enough equity in the, in the property. Why? Because it's going to allow us to negotiate better terms. We're going to be able to better help the owner uh, because there are going to be cases where the owner is underwater. What does that mean? That means that the owner owes more than what the property is worth. So guess what? We are not going to be able to pursue those because we are not a mortgage um, broker. So the only solution they have is for them to uh, pursue a short sale, okay? Or uh, do a loan modification. Uh, we won't be able to help them. So that's a lead we're not going to pursue. We're going to be pursuing leads with high equity and motivation. So the easiest way that we can find that is by filtering high equity. You see this property equity filter, over 50% equity filter. So right now we have 40,000 foreclosures. So now I'm gonna filter by over 50%, let's say in, uh, I'm gonna go to DuPage, just to change it up a bit, okay? So I just want 
foreclosures with tons of equity. We found 451 foreclosures with high equity in DuPage. I'm gonna give you an example of what that means, okay? So I'm gonna randomly pick the first one, Glen Ellen. Glen Ellen is in a great area. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna show you again. The owner, Michael, owes 157,000. The last time he made a payment on the mortgage was last October 2019, and the bank filed for pre foreclosure last month. So October, November, December, January, February, April, no, March, April, so five months. It took the bank five months um, to file a lawsuit against the owner um, to obviously recoup the, the, the money. So imagine, so they owe 157, but the property is worth, look at that, between 320 to 350. So the owner has over 50% equity in this property. And guess what? The owner, if, if the owner doesn't come current with the loan, guess what? They're gonna lose the equity, they're gonna lose the property, and they're gonna ruin their credit. Unless you and I come to the rescue, okay? So what does that mean? Right now, we have identified one of the main factors, a lot of equity. The second thing that we need to identify is motivation. So the owner, Michael, just entered pre foreclosure uh, last month. So most likely, Michael is gonna be in denial. So what does that mean? That uh, he's not gonna wanna work with us investors uh, because he believes he's gonna be able to get out of the pre foreclosure. So how do we find that out? When you click on the owner's name, uh, we are going to give you their contact information, okay? And we have scripts that we're gonna make available to all of you on how you need to approach this scenario. So right now, we did a skip tracing, which means getting their, their contact information. So we have Michael's cell phone numbers, okay? So we're gonna be, pick up the phone and say, hey, Michael, my name is, and then you spell your name, say, I'm a real estate investor buying properties in Glen Ellen. And by the way, I happen to realize that your property is in foreclosure. Did you realize that? Did you know about that by any chance? You just want to test the waters, right? Well, you want to find out how motivated they are because they might say, oh, no, my, no, I got, taken, I, I got that taken care of. Uh, my property is not in foreclosure. I'm not interested. Thank you. That tells you that it's a cold leave. They're not interested, okay? But you might encounter people that they say, well, yes, I know I'm, I'm in foreclosure. Uh, in fact, if you offer me 250,000, I'm selling the property. That's a hot lead, okay? With equity, okay? Those are the leads that we're looking for, okay? Because these, these people just entered the foreclosure process recently. In the last, um, you need to filter these for people who entered the foreclosure process uh, as far back as six months, okay? That's, that's my recommendation. When you look for pre-foreclosures, go back no more than six months, okay? Uh, so that is the first stage of the foreclosure process right here. So the cool thing about this is that um, we can buy properties 50 cents on the dollar. So meaning paying half of what they're worth after repair value. So if the after repair value is, let's say in this example, 150,000, and they have a lot of equity, we could easily pay half of it, 75,000 for it, when there's a lot of motivation and a lot of equity, okay? So that is why you can maximize your profits when you intercept the property, okay, in the pre foreclosure process. Now, let's move on to the next stage. Uh, time goes by, the owner does nothing to come current with the loan, so by the ninth month, ninth, all the way to 12 months, guess what? The judge is gonna say, okay, it's been long enough and you owner have not done anything to come current with the loan. Therefore, I'm going to give you the auction date of your property, okay? So that is pretty much when we're gonna auction off your property at the judicial courthouse, okay? 
and that's the end of the story. So at that point, notice uh, it's technically it's called notice of trustee sale. That's when the judge says, boom, in three months down the road, your property is going to get auctioned off at the courthouse. Okay. So at that point, guess what? The owner is going to be very motivated. Why? Because very soon they're going to lose their property. Uh, so how do we find those right here? So now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but they're called upcoming auctions. Okay. These are judicial auctions. Okay. So before they go to the judicial auction, these people are given the auction date. Okay. So for instance, and then we're going to need the same two factors, high equity and a lot of uh, motivation. So I'm just going to filter 50% uh, and then now I'm going to look in uh, Lake County. Okay. So right now we have 1772, uh, 1722 uh, upcoming auctions. We're going to filter these by high equity. And then we came down to only 14 in Lake County. Okay. So why are they great deals? So I'm going to go to Vernon Hills. That's a great neighborhood. It's an A neighborhood. Why is this a great deal? I'm going to show you. Uh, auction date is going to be pretty much in about uh, three weeks from today. It's going to be in the Lake County Courthouse at 9 a.m. So now we have three weeks or the owner has three weeks before their property is going to get auctioned off at the courthouse. And check this out. Luis... That's the name of the owner, owes 49000 but yet the property is worth between 133 to 150 So the owner, Luis, has about $100,000 in equity. And guess what? In three weeks, Luis is going to lose the property uh, unless we help. We, where do we come into the picture? The way we come into the picture is we have to satisfy the debt, the 50,000, okay? Luis owes the bank, the bank is US bank, 50,000. Plus, there are gonna be some penalties and fees. So add another 10%. So it's not gonna be 50,000, it's gonna be, I would say 55 to 60,000 because the last payment amount was done on April, 2019, okay? So it's a long time ago. So this is gonna be easily uh, 60,000, okay? But it's okay because guess what? This property is worth between 133 to 147. So there's a lot of room, meat in the bone. And then, so right here, we need to pay off the debt 60,000. And on top of that, uh, we're going to need to give the owner some sort of relocation package for them to move or settle somewhere else. Uh, so having said that, the question is, how much should we pay for the property? This is where a lot of investors make a big mistake. They end up overpaying for the property, so they don't leave enough meat in the bone for them to make a profit on a flip, on a rental, or let alone a wholesale. So no worries. Here, we're going to tell you uh, max allowed offer depending on your exit strategy. So if you're going to do a flip, the most we should pay is 78000 a rental, 92, if we're gonna do a wholesale, 71,000. And that is based on the ARV, and then based on the estimate, estimated rehab expense, okay? Uh, we're assuming we're gonna need to do light to medium rehab on the property, okay? It's not a good rehab. We are under the assumption um, this property is in need of light to medium rehab. For sure, it's not a good rehab, why? because somebody's living in the property, okay? So at this point, how do you buy this property before it hits the courthouse in three weeks? That's the big question. We need to get in touch with Luis right away, right? Because we don't have much time. Uh, so this is the cell phone number, the phone number, her email, all her contact information. So the way to do it is, we're gonna call Luis and say, hey Luis, you know, I'm a real estate investor buying properties in Vernon Hills. I realize that your property is going to the judicial auction in three weeks from now. I can make it go away. They're going to be like, really? Can you help? Of course. Um, 
So imagine if we can buy this property, so we said the bank is gonna require at least 60,000. How you, what about if we pay another 10,000 10, for her to settle somewhere else? That should pay for uh, down payment or security deposit somewhere else, moving expenses, storage exp expenses. Um, so if we pay 70,000 for the property, guess what? We could do a flip, we could do a rental, we could wholesale the, this property. All three exit strategies in real estate would be readily available for us. Why? Because we are buying the property for the right price. But we obviously need to take action fairly fast because we only have three weeks or maybe a little bit more before this property hits the judicial um, sale at the courthouse. So, um, we need to buy this property using an asset-based lender, Harmony Lender. So Harmony Lender is expensive money. You're gonna pay 12%, two points. It's a short-term loan, okay? But guess what? You can close very quickly in as little as two to three weeks, okay? So time is of essence in these type of deals, but if you can pay 50 cents on the dollar, I mean, you can make a really nice profit if you buy these properties for the right price. Not only will you profit or maximize your profit uh, at this stage of the foreclosure process, but think about this. You're going to help somebody. You're going to prevent Louis from losing their property, losing their equity, and ruining their credit. So everyone wins. And the bank is not gonna do a write-off on this property. They're gonna get their money back. So the bank wins, you win, and the owner wins. It's a win-win for everyone, okay? Um, so it is this powerful. We have all the data at your fingertips. So we wanna sh make sure that you fully understand the stages where you can intercept the property. So you, so far, we have talked about two stages. Um, Pre-foreclosure, that happens um, 30 to 90 days. And then the notice of trustee sale, uh, nine to 12 months. That's when the judge says, it's been long enough, long enough, we're gonna auction off your property in three to four months. So when you filter, this is so critical. When you go to the upcoming auctions, there's a date filter, okay, auction date. So you want to look for properties that are going to be auctioned off in the future. So if we are on May right now, so you need to look for properties that are going to go to auction, uh, I would say end of June, and then uh, you can go into the future, maybe three, six months. So June, July, uh, August, September. Why is this? This is the important date. You want to look at properties that are going to go to the courthouse auction in at least one month from today. Why? Because you need two to three weeks to get funded. Does that make sense? So you need to have enough time uh, to get funding for the deal, okay? That is why you cannot look at properties that are going to go to the judicial auction next week because unless you have cash in the bank, you won't be able to buy it in that short of time or Either you have cash in the bank or you have access to private money lender. That means somebody that has money who can lend you the money. It's sort of like a harmony lender, but it's cheaper money. Cheaper than a harmony lender, quicker, and they can finance the purchase, the rehab, everything. The only drawback with private money lenders is that it's relationship-based. It's who you know, right? Because um, it's an individual with a lot of money and they chose to be passive investors, but in exchange, they're going to lend you money in exchange for a return. And, and again, they're going to charge you sort of like about the same nine to 12% uh, interest rate. It's a short term loan four to 12 months and two points. Okay. So we do have options, but my recommendation is when you look for properties that are going to go to the judicial auction at the courthouse, you need to look for properties at least one month from today. So you have enough time to not only negotiate the deal, but get it funded. So don't look for properties that are going like next week or in two weeks, unless obviously you have two things, cash in the bank 
or access to private money lending, okay? Otherwise, if you're gonna use a hard money lender, uh, you need to give yourself at least a month, okay? So that is the second stage. Now, uh, before I move forward, I wanna know if there are any questions on the line. So I'm looking at the chat. Are there any questions on the line so far? I wanna make sure that I have not lost anyone. Um, okay, let's continue. So what happens next? If we don't do anything to help the owner in the pre-foreclosure stage, which is 30 to 90 days, and then we don't do anything to help them uh, 30 to 45 days before their property goes to the judicial auction, then what happens? Then the property is going to go to the courthouse. They're gonna auction off the property at the courthouse. So that's called the judicial auction, the trusty uh, auction, it has many names, okay? But in a nutshell, is the judicial auction at the courthouse. At that place, guess what? That's where you don't want to buy the properties from. And I'm gonna tell you the disadvantages why you should not buy properties at the judicial auction at the courthouse. You have way too many disadvantages. First of all, you buy sight unseen. You don't get to see the property. Whereas before, if you intercept the property, you, by reaching out to the owner in the previous two stages, guess what? You are negotiating directly with the owner. Guess what? You get to see the property from the inside. Number two, at the courthouse or the judicial auction, you're gonna need to pay cash. You have 24 hours to pay cash for the property. That's a big problem because you are not leveraging from other people's money. And to grow in real estate, you need to leverage from other people's money, okay? Whereas if you intercept the property in the preferred closure or the upcoming auction, guess what? You get to finance the purchase by using a hard money lender, private money lender. That is huge, right? Using other people's money. So that is the second reason why you should not go to the judicial auction. You can lose your shirt. And third disadvantage, and this is huge, you're going to be like in a shark tank. You're gonna be overbeating each other because there are gonna be a lot of investors showing up at the courthouse and they're gonna be beating each other. Therefore, the likelihood of you overpaying for the property is very high. Whereas if you were to intercept the property before, like at the pre-foreclosure or upcoming auction stage, guess what? You have zero competition. It's you and the owner. That's the beauty about intercepting the property, okay? So again, you don't want to show up at the courthouse. A lot of people have lost a lot of money because they don't know what they're looking for. Uh, not only that, but guess what? The problem is that people don't do enough due diligence when they go to the judicial auction. Um, you need to do a title ser search on the property to make sure that it's, uh, that it doesn't have, that the title is clear, right? Because some properties have liens, encumbrances, uh, so you can buy a piece of junk, something that is worthless. So please don't go to the courthouse and show up at the judicial auction. Uh, there's a question on the line. It says, Hugo, how much will COVID delay judicial auctions? Do you have an updated date? Uh, so right now, Illinois is still shot for uh, when it comes to the uh, judicial auctions. So it's not going to be any time in June. So they're talking the earliest July. Okay. So that works in your advantage. Why? because you can still work directly with the owner. So you have more time, okay, to work with the owner because the bank is not going to foreclose on the owner when the courts are closed. So that works in your advantage and the owner's advantage. Okay, so that great question. Um, now, what happens uh, at the judicial courthouse? As I told you, it's a shark tank. Everyone is beating each other and then uh, but there may be the case where nobody buys the property, right? It might be indeed a piece of junk and nobody buys the property. So what happens? Then 
the bank takes over the property. So it becomes an REO, real estate owned. So we call that also shadow inventory. So it goes right here, uh, return to the bank. Okay, it's the shadow inventory. Uh, there could be other options that the auction gets postponed. Like right now, the courts are closed. So the auction gets postponed until the courts reopen. Uh, sold to third party. This is when the property never makes it to the judicial auction. Why? Because somebody like you or me intercept the property and then we pay off the outstanding mortgage with the bank. Okay. So then the auction doesn't occur. Okay. And then it could get canceled. How can the uh, judicial auction get canceled? Um, a way for the judicial auction to get canceled is if the owner files for bankruptcy, okay, immediately the judicial auction is going to get canceled. So the owner is going to be protected. Uh, typically, that's a way for owners to buy time and then eventually try to negotiate a short sale with the bank. Okay, they don't need to follow through the, for, uh, the bankruptcy, bankruptcy proceedings. Uh, that's just a way for them to buy time. So that's how the judicial auction can get canceled. But let's focus on REOs or shadow inventory. So what happens now, the bank ends up with the property. They're, again, they're not in the business of real estate. They want to dispose of those properties. So now, guess what? you are going to know when these properties become banked on properties or shadow inventory right here. Okay. So now we can look at, uh, now let's look at uh, McHenry, for instance, or let's do Cook. Okay. So I can look at properties with a lot of equity in Cook County that became REOs. So these properties now belong to the banks. So now let me open up one randomly. So Elk Grove. Elk Grove is a great area. So let's take a quick look at these. So this property became uh, the, uh, an, an REO back in March. Okay. So about uh, two months ago. So it went to the courthouse judicial auction. Nobody bought it. Now the question is, why did this property did not sell? So let me show you the, the numbers very quickly. Uh, so this owner, Jesse, the Jesse owed 120,000 to the bank. This property is worth like 250. So he had a lot of equity. Uh, so this is a clear example, guys. So he had over a hundred thousand in equity and yet he lost the equity, the home and ruined his credit. So on March 6 at 1030, this bank took over his property and the starting bid was 173. Um, now, why would you think nobody would buy this property? Because uh, pro probably the property was not in good shape or also because there's not enough meat in the bone. So the bank is asking for 173. Based on our computations, the most you should pay for this property if you were to do a flip is 148. Does that make sense? So if I'm a flipper or if I'm a wholesaler, I cannot afford to pay 173 for this property. There's no way right? Because there's not enough meat in the bone. So that is the reason why many, many investors wouldn't buy this property if they know the numbers like you and I do. Okay. So this property, the starting bid is way too high. And this was a mistake because if you think about it, uh, the bank was owed 120,000. I know the bank wants to maximize, but they should cut their losses, right? Uh, minimize their loss. So they were asking for way too much. Um, so they ended up uh, with the property. So, but this is a, one of the reasons why usually they become REOs because the starting bid is way too high. It just doesn't make sense to buy this property at 173. The only exit strategy that you're gonna have is a rental 
And that is with the assumption that the property needs a light to medium rehab of up to 35,000. So it is just way too risky. Um, so that's an example of banked on properties. Now, once the property becomes the, uh, becomes um, REO, or it falls into the bank's assets, now you can buy these properties, but this is the secret, okay? I put it in the PowerPoint. The secret is that you need to go after, it's right here small banks that is the secret okay because guess what let's see who owns this property this property is owned by reverse mortgage solution okay so that seems like a small lender so you can easily reach out to them you can reach out to their attorney uh, directly or you can look up the bank's information so you want to talk to the asset manager or you can directly contact their attorney to see if they would entertain an offer on this property. Because remember, the bank is not in the real estate business. They're in the lending business. They want to sell this off. But the question is, why are you going to target small banks? Because small banks typically don't have a foreclosure department, okay? So they can sell off one or two properties to you or me. But if it's like a Chase, Bank of America, uh, US Bank, there are very large banks with a foreclosure department. So guess what? They're, gonna, they're not gonna sell one, two, three properties to you or me. They want to sell properties bulk, okay? So if it's a large bank, you have no chance to buy properties directly from them. So now the question is, what is the bank going to do to get rid of this property? So the bank is going to do two things right here. They're going to give it to an REO broker who is going to put it in the MLS and they will also send this property to the auctioning platforms such as Hobzoo, Auction.com, uh, Hudson and Marshalls. These are like the main four auctioning platforms. So at that point, guess what? You're not going to pay 50 cents on the dollar. You are going to be paying a lot more. You're going to be paying 70, 80 cents on the dollar. So it might not be a good deal. If, if the property ends up in the MLS, there's going to be a lot of competition. And the same applies if it goes to the auctioning platforms like Hobzu, auction.com and so forth. Why? Because you have people bidding for the property. And not only that, but many of these auctioning sites uh, may not allow you to use funding. So they may require you to pay cash for it. So it is a little bit more complicated if you wait uh, for the property to become an REO. But guess what? We have, absolute, we have a solution for that. I mean, it's super, super amazing. Uh, we have a contact in Texas and we get hundreds of properties on a weekly basis that we can buy directly from the bank. So these are strictly REOs, okay? And we can buy them directly from the bank even if it's a Bank of America, even if it's a Chase, without competition. So we can pick and choose the properties we want and we can just buy them, even if they are listed in the auctioning platforms like auction.com, hubs.com. We can go the back door, pull them, buy them, zero, comp zero competition. And above all, what's so important is that we are just going to pay the reserve price. So the reserve price is how much the bank is willing to sell the property for. So in this case, typically the reserve is going to be like the starting bid, okay, uh, for the most part. But it could be a lot less. So where is that inventory? Right here. We call it shadow inventory, okay? And this is huge. Like this week, we got about a thousand properties right here. Now, why is this so powerful? Let me show you. Uh, I can filter, give me all the properties that have over 50% equity. So out of about a thousand properties, I found 45 properties with a lot of equity. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna click on map view right here. I wanna see the location of the properties. 
because these are going to be very hot deals that we can buy directly from the bank. So I just want to uh, zoom in. We get them even in Indiana. Okay. So I want to zoom in a little bit more. And some of them are like very far, like in the Quad Cities. But I see, for instance, Melrose Park. I think this property is in uh, Cicero. So Cicero, we've been buying properties in Cicero. So this catches my eye, this property in Cicero. Uh, I'm going to click on view details. I'm going to tell you why this might be an amazing deal. And indeed, this is a great deal, guys. So check this out. This property... We can buy it for 134,000. Guess what the ARV is on this property? Twice as much. And then DealBolt says the most you should pay is 144 for a flip, 130 for a wholesale, okay? It's within the range. Does that make sense? So now this looks pretty good. I mean, this is gonna cash flow. You're gonna be able to do a buy and hold, fix and flip. So now the next thing that I wanna do is location, 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 right? So I want to make sure this is not on a busy street near cemetery, train tracks. It looks good. I'm going to do street view just to make sure. Uh, I'm, I think I'm in the alley, okay? Let me close this off. So yeah, this is bringing me to the alley. I want to see the street. So I would need to do a little bit more due diligence to get on the street. So this is... Uh, 12, 16, South 59. So I'm on 59th Street. So I want to make sure that this property is not uh, like in front of uh, Commercial Street. Okay, that is very important. And this might be the case. Okay, so because it's not going to be very marketable if the property is like near a Commercial Street, okay, or a big factory. So we need to do a little bit more due diligence on the location of the property. But so far, the numbers would work amazing. I'm just a little bit concerned uh, on the location because I see, like, you see these trucks and this uh, commercial strip. So we just, it might be one of these properties right here, okay? So we just need to be careful about that. But let's just focus on uh, the inventory, right? So that's how easy we can find amazing deals. So if the location is good, I mean, we can pay 50 cents on the dollar. This property is vacant. So the way it works is we got the inventory this week. We have about two to three days to do our due diligence. So we're going to go and uh, look at the property, see if it's vacant, see if uh, we can see the condition from the windows. Uh, make sure that we do our due diligence. And if it makes sense, we can just... Uh, buy this property for 134 and there's going to be uh, a fee from our partner who gives us access to this inventory for them to pull all these strings and pull it from the back door. Okay. Consulting fees range from four to 10,000. That's what I've seen depending on the deal. But if we can buy this property paying 50 cents on the dollar, I mean, wouldn't be, wouldn't it be a great deal? Is that a yes or a yes? Of course. Right. Even if we pay, uh, four or five thousand on top of this is still a great deal because we have a lot of meat in the bone. Uh, so that's just an example how we can buy properties uh, from the back door. Let me see. This property is in Maywood. Maywood is a C area, so we can buy this for seventy thousand. And uh, ARV is about one twenty, one thirty. So. Um, there's a lot of equity as well in this property. Okay, so the most we should pay is about 70,000 for a flip price. So this could potentially be also a great deal for those of you uh, who are interested, let's say in Maywood. Maywood is a C plus area. It, it's got some pockets. Uh, let me take a look at the street view. Okay, so it looks okay. But uh, again, we have a few days to do our due diligence. Uh, so it is this powerful that we can buy inventory directly from the bank. Uh, even if these properties are going to the judicial auction, uh, hubsuauction.com, Hudson and Marshall, meaning, I mean, I meant to say the auction platforms, we can still buy them, okay? Zero competition. And guess what? Best of all, we can get uh, funding for them. Okay. So if he, if he has a lot of equity, we can buy them from the back door 
and we can use asset-based lenders like a hard money lender, a private money lender. So it is just uh, an incredible opportunity. I wanna see if there are any questions on the chat. Um, so yeah, there is a couple of questions. What tab link do you use to find this again? Oh, okay, so Jason, it's a shadow inventory right here. It's a tab. Uh, now, for you to have access to this inventory, three things need to happen. You need to be a yearly subscriber, number one. Number two, you need to provide with your entity docs, meaning your LLC, your S-Corp. And then number three, you need a line of credit, okay? So we want to make sure that you can follow through on these deals. Because once you say, I want to buy this property, you're going to sign a performance agreement. And there's no way back. Okay, you've got to follow through by this property. Why? Because our partners are pulling the strings to get this property off from the auctioning platforms. Um, so there's no way back, right? So you cannot wholesale these properties, you have to buy them. Uh, so if you're, we're going to vet you, Jacob from Texas is going to call you. Uh, so if you meet those requirements, you're going to start buying properties um uh, directly from large banks it's a huge benefit we we've been buying several of them already we have two on the contract uh, and i think they're going to be closing uh next month in june uh, so it's super exciting another question is why doesn't a foreclosure client try to sell it on the mls immediately great question mark uh you'll be surprised many people are still in denial they think they're gonna come current with the loan um, and then uh, they don't ask for help. Some others, you know, they don't have the money to fix up the property, clean it up. Because when you put a property in the MLS, um, you know, many brokers, they want you to make sure that it's in sellable condition, okay? So they just don't have the money. They just want, uh, if they're motivated and they know what's gonna happen to them, uh, because eventually they're gonna lose their property, uh, they just want like a cash offer, right? Uh, and that's where we come into the picture. But you'll be surprised. Many people don't even go to brokers to have to see if they can sell it in the MLS, right? Uh, it's very sad. Like the property that I showed you earlier where uh, this individual, uh, Jesse, lost the property and he had over 100000 in equity. So why didn't he go to a broker? He just... I just can't comprehend, right? That they let it loose to the foreclosure process. So they lose the equity, the home, they ruin the credit. That is why we come into the picture to give a solution to somebody in need. So it's a win-win for the bank, for the owner, for you. You can buy properties 50 cents on the dollar. So it is so critical. Uh, another question is, okay, so that, that, that was just uh, all the questions. So I want to, uh, summarize everything that we talked about because I want to make sure that you have a really good understanding on the foreclosure process. Um, so let me just quickly summarize the foreclosure process. Uh, Illinois happens to be a judicial state. So what does that mean? There are about 25 judicial states in uh, the United States. What that means is that the banks need to go to the court system to foreclose on the owner. Therefore, the foreclosure process can take up to two years versus non-judicial states like California. They can foreclose on the owner in less than eight months. Why? Because they don't need to go through the court system, all the bureaucracy. Uh, so we happen to be in a judicial state. Therefore, it's going to take a long time for the foreclosure process. And therefore, judicial states take longer to rebound uh, because... It takes about two years before those properties can come back or recycle back into the market versus like uh, non-judicial states like California. They can rebound a lot quicker because they're going to recycle the distressed properties or foreclosed properties back into the market pool a lot quicker, six to nine months. Okay. So now you need to understand pretty much two stages that are so critical in the foreclosure process. The pre-foreclosure that happens three to six, uh, three to four, three to six months after the owner defaulted on the loan, okay? So once they enter the pre-foreclosure, 
we're going to need to look for two things, a lot of equity and a lot of motivation. If that happens, if you have that combination, you have a great deal. Okay. But remember, when they enter the pre foreclosure, most owners are going to be in denial. So they might not talk to you. Be aware of that. Two, what's the next option? The next option is after nine to 12 months, the judge is going to issue what's called the notice of trustee sale. In other words, they're going to issue the auction date. It's been long enough. Now it's time to auction off the property. So the creditors, in this case, the bank uh, or the plaintiff is going to sell off the property. Uh, so those are the two stages. Now the, the upcoming auction, it is so critical because in 40 to 90 days, the owner is going to lose everything, the equity, uh, the property, ruin their credit. So they're going to be extremely motivated and we can filter by high equity. So you're going to have the two requirements for you to get a great deal. Okay. A lot of equity and um, motivation. So that is my favorite lead pipe, upcoming auctions, because you can buy properties 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, you never want to show up to the judicial sale at the courthouse. It's a short term. You buy property sight unseen. You don't get to uh, fund the deal. You have to pay cash and you can overpay for the property. So please don't show up to the judicial auctions. And the next step is if nobody buys a property, then it becomes REO. You can buy them directly from small banks because they don't have a foreclosure department. So you can buy one or two properties from small community banks. You cannot buy them from large banks because they're going to. Uh, Put them in the auctioning platforms bulk but we do have the solution where you can buy them directly from large banks but we're, we're going to need to vet you okay you need to have proof of funds or a line of credit and your entity docs in a row so you can buy them directly from the bank zero competition you get to uh fund the deal and see the property from the inside so it's just an incredible way to buy amazing home run deals. And um, finally, you don't want to buy the properties uh, from the MLS or the auctioning platforms unless you really know the numbers, right? Because you can overpay for the property very easily. So that is in a nutshell, the uh, foreclosure process. I wanna make sure I answer all your questions now. Um, here we have another question. Is the software available in Texas? Unfortunately not, uh, just Illinois. How is the notice of trustee sale recorded and uh, publicized? So um, you can go to the courthouse for the county and the, it's public record, public information. But obviously we make it easy uh, for our dealable members. It's all right here. We have all the data right here. When they go into the, when the judge issues the notice of trustee sale, boom, we load them into DealBall. We upload our off-market leads daily, okay? Uh, now, another question is for shadow inventory or REOs, what is the best way to buy the property? Uh, so you either contact the bank directly if it's a small bank or if it's a large bank and you just wanna buy properties high equity directly from the bank, zero competition, you can use the shadow inventory that we have access to, okay? But again, you're gonna need to have a line of credit and your entity docs in a row. That's the condition, plus you need to be a yearly member for DealBolt. Uh, so we've been buying uh, several properties just from banks because they're like home run deals. A lot of equity, very little rehab uh, in great neighborhoods, okay? Another question is, how often is the section of deal vault updated with new inventory daily? Okay, so right now, because courthouses are closed, we're getting uh, less number of pre foreclosures, upcoming auctions. But once things reopen, right, and the courthouses start taking um, foreclosure cases, we're going to get a huge wave of 
prefect closures, upcoming auctions. So it's a huge opportunity for all of you guys. That is why we are running so many webinars a week and a bootcamp this Sunday, because I wanna make sure that you have all the training, the leads, the technology, the knowledge for you to pull the trigger um, when necessary, right? Which is gonna be very soon. Another question, what is the cost of the software? So we're gonna give it to you for free, Patricia, and everyone on the line who does not have access to Vable for the next 30 days. So we're gonna give you access to everything unlimited training, everything you see, uh, access to MLS, off-market. So you can search the MLS as if you were a broker uh, because we're a brokerage. So through us, we give you access to the MLS. You have access to the off-market properties. Um, you have access to over 6,000 private money lenders, over 60,000 cash buyers so that you can sell your wholesale deals for top dollars. Uh, we give you access to training, over 100 training videos. We give you access to all our preferred partners. So people who've made us successful, over 80 people um, you have at your disposal. So these are top key players in the industry at your fingertips, okay? So we're gonna give you access to everything. Um, it's gonna be free for the next 30 days. Now, another question is, uh, do wholesalers always have limitations when uh, purchasing uh, in an REO scenario. So wholesalers uh, never buy a property. So they just get it on the contract and they sell the rights of the contract to a cash buyer or an investor. So wholesalers never buy properties. Um, they just sell the rights of the contract, okay? There's an exception to the rule. So there are some wholesalers who are gonna make a killing. So they do what's called the double close. So they do need to close on one uh, with the seller and then back to back do another closing with the end buyer or the cash buyer. So they can do that, but they can use transactional funding or they can use the cash or the funds from the end buyer uh, to pay the seller. So we're gonna talk about uh, that on Sunday at the bootcamp but wholesalers never technically buy a property. They just sell the rights of the contract. Another question is, are you going to have another lender replay? Absolutely, absolutely, because uh, our Zoom account got hacked uh, over the weekend, so we couldn't run the lending um, webinar. Absolutely, but guess what, Laura? On Sunday at the bootcamp, uh, we're gonna cover lending in depth, okay? Uh, we're going to be talking about asset-based lenders, conventional lenders, private money lenders. So it's going to be a really cool event. Make sure that you join. Uh, another question, what's the cost of deal vault after 30 days? So if you decide to stay, uh, the retail is 190, but we're going to lock you in at the 140. So free for the next 30 days, and then it's going to be uh, 140 per month. If you decide to do the yearly, it's going to be 120 a month, okay? You can cancel anytime, okay? If you do the yearly, it's built uh, once. If you do the monthly, you can cancel anytime. There's no commitment, okay? And you have unlimited training. Uh, so are there any other questions on the line? I just wanna make sure that the foreclosure process is very clear uh, because this is how you can maximize your profits. Not only that, but make a win-win for you, for the owner and for the bank when you intercept the property before it hits the judicial auction. You never wanna to go to the judicial auction. You either intercept the property before or you buy it after from the bank. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Are there any other questions? Um, now, there's another question is, how did you reach out uh, to the owners during the pre closure process? Very simple. We give you the, the owner's contact information, like in the inventory that I showed you earlier, uh, right here. All you need to do is click on the owner's name, and boom, we're gonna give you the contact information. So 
you don't have to worry about uh, getting in touch with them or finding out their contact information. We're going to give it to you. Okay, that that is all inclusive. Now, how do you convince a tenant to sell in foreclosure, uh, Lori? We're going to show you on uh, Sunday the scripts that you need to use to not only make an appointment, but get the owner to sign the contract. It's going to be so awesome. I'm super excited about this because I'm going to give you guys so much value, including the scripts. So in, ha in fact, I have them right here. So uh, it's in, uh, let me show you. I think it's wholesaling, bootcamp, wholesaling, and then we have scripts right here. So we're going to give you the scripts. Okay, uh, I love this script. This is my favorite script. Okay, so that is so we're gonna give a lot of content value on Sunday. So this script is uh, what it takes for you to pretty much get the owner to sign the agreement. So we're gonna give you the contracts. We're gonna give you the scripts. We're gonna give you A through Z on how you're gonna not only be able to make an appointment with the owner, but also get them to sign the contract. So I'm super excited about this Sunday bootcamp. Um, another question is, um, how uh, is it okay to do a short sale with the seller? Absolutely, Ron. Uh, you do a short sale when you are underwater, okay? When the owner is underwater, meaning that they owe more than what the property is worth. Um, and then uh, we have a resource for short sales. So if you're thinking about uh, short sales, we're going to get in get you in touch with uh, Dean Peters as part of Deal Vault. Uh, are there any other questions on the line that I can help you answer? Um, so if not, I wanna make sure that you RSVP for uh, our next uh, upcoming events this week. Uh, so tomorrow we're gonna be talking about um, COVID and the different uh, options from SBA, okay, to get loans, grants. And then Thursday, we're going to do a live property tour. Okay, it's virtual. It's going to be so cool. We're going to show you how to analyze it, deal, no deal. And then on Sunday, it's our big boot camp event. I want to make sure that all of you RSVP. Um, we already have 154 RSVP. So this is huge. Uh, so make sure that you RSVP to this event. I'm going to send you guys the link that's for the event and then for the free trial if you don't have access to deal vault i'm gonna show you free trial how to get it very simple just fill this form out okay and then uh, for the package make sure that you select for the package i'm gonna put select a special chicago deal vault package it's special chicago deal vault and then for the promo code it's going to be foreclosure okay so right here the promo code is going to be foreclosure so right here foreclosure fill this out and then you're going to get uh, 30 days free 30 days free and after that is going to be 140 per month or 120 per month if you do the yearly okay very simple make sure that you rsvp for the boot camp we have 154 rsvp it's going to be a huge event i'm super excited to to give you so much value pretty much everything um, are there any other questions on the line Okay, there's another question. The RSVP link doesn't seem to work. Let me quickly check that. Uh, so right here, uh, this is the RSVP link. So it seems to work. This is the RSVP link. Uh, I'm gonna paste it. RSVP link to the bootcamp, okay? Because we're gonna send you uh, a lot of information. So pretty much we have a lot of material contracts scripts that we're going to give away make sure that you rsvp we need to have your contact information so we email you all the materials from the bootcamp okay 
So RSVP to the bootcamp, we're gonna cover everything from wholesaling, fix and flip and rentals, just to give you an idea of what the bootcamp is going to cover, okay? So we're gonna be talking about uh, fundamentals, you know, how to set up your business, what type of entities are good for you, applying for business credit cards, applying for line of credit. Uh, we're gonna be covering everything, A through Z on wholesaling, how to do marketing strategies, get your leads, um, making appointments, talking about assignments, double closing, virtual wholesaling. There, we're gonna move uh, on to fix and flips. Another question is, how do you access the scripts? Uh, we're gonna give them to you, okay? So when you join the, uh, when you RSVP, we are going to send you a link uh, to all the scripts. Seller scripts, we are going to even give you an interview, a role play with Dan Carlton and, uh, and Tommy. It's, it's awesome how you're gonna be able to uh, make an appointment with the owner. So it's really, really cool, okay? So you're gonna have everyone access to that. We're gonna cover everything on fix and flip. We're gonna be talking about uh, flipping uh, spreads, top flipping markets. Uh, we're gonna break down the rehab process. We're gonna give you our rehab cost template so you come up with an accurate um, rehab estimate, how to avoid common mistakes, formulate your scope of work, and finally, we're gonna cover rentals. How to build a million dollar empire, how to recycle money, how to grow uh, from zero to 30 in two and a half years or less, how to recycle money, um, how to have a deal flow, identifying top rental markets, identifying hot uh, home run deals. And then we're gonna finish up talking about uh, property management. And also uh, we're gonna give you a framework on whether you should flip or rent. It's gonna be so awesome. So you're gonna have access to all of that. And then we're gonna give you breaks. So for all of you to do a speed uh, networking, it's virtually, so we're gonna pair you up in groups uh, for all of you to partner up, potentially find your next uh, joint venture. It's gonna be so cool. Every 18 minutes, we're gonna do a quick virtual speed networking. So I wanna make sure that everyone is fresh and ready to learn on Sunday. Uh, so please RSVP, get your 30 day free trial. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We have uh, an event tomorrow. So these are the links to sign up, okay? Which I just sent via the chat. There's another question. Uh, Hugo, are you doing the entire webinar or, or is it Andrew part of it? So I'm doing the entire bootcamp, okay? Uh, it's gonna be just myself. I'm gonna be talking about everything. Uh, at the beginning, we're gonna have sponsors, okay? So we're gonna acknowledge and bring some sponsors. Uh, pretty much the key Industry players in real estate are gonna be on Sunday as well, present. Another question is, if I need partnership, can I contact Chicago Deal Vault about the house in Evergreen Park? Yeah, absolutely, Ron, uh, absolutely. Uh, so we can give you, um, connect you with other real estate investors from Chicago Deal Vault who are currently interested in investing in Evergreen Park. Uh, so in fact, uh, uh, Ron, before I forget, send us an email and then uh, we're gonna connect you with uh, other real estate investors who are looking in uh, Evergreen Park, okay? Please send us an email. Adrian, besides getting property on the contract, how do, you, how do we wholesale property and uh, are we limited to only one? So we're gonna show you on Sunday the wholesaling process and indeed you are limited to one wholesale deal every 12 months unless you are a licensed real estate broker. So please try to get your real estate license. I'm gonna show you on Sunday where to go get your license, uh, okay? Are there any other questions, friends? I'm so much looking uh, forward to the bootcamp. On Sunday, it's gonna be an awesome event. Please download uh, Deal Vault app. If you still don't have it, we have uh, over a uh, hundred training videos, all in a sequential manner. Go to the Apple store or the Google Play store, type in Deal Vault, and um, 
you're going to be able to download the app or you can also send a text to 818 818 and the keyword deal vault and then we're going to reply with uh, the links to the apple store or the google play store so thank you everyone for joining today i look forward to seeing you